You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Mallory Smith, Nick Wilson, and meteorologist Victor Perez. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It is 645 on this Tuesday morning. I'm Mallory Smith. I'm Nick Wilson. I'm Victor Perez. All right. Well, we are seeing that cloud coverage already this morning because the sunrises are definitely coming earlier and earlier, but the sun is going to come out later. Yeah, we'll be seeing some sunshine. You know, some areas okay. seeing it right now as we see cloud coverage moving from the west to the east. But most of us here in central Siouxland seeing more overcast skies and just seeing the hint of that sunrise as we see traffic backing up a little bit on Highway 20. Still dealing with those lights out there as we'll see that winds in the Siouxland region are flowing out from the southeast, ranging between 5 and 10 miles per hour for most of us. But occasionally there's a couple locations with winds over 10, uh, which will be occurring throughout the daytime with gusts picking up to 15 and 25 here and there. Now rain accumulation for yesterday was on the lower end, only a few tenths as we saw those showers and storms with some locations receiving just barely more than trace rainfall. Hopefully we can make some changes and uh, increase that total as we go forward today. Back to you too. All right, thanks Victor. One week after approving the third and final reading of a wastewater rate increase, Sioux City City Council members unanimously approved the formation of a Wastewater Treatment Plant Reconstruction and Design Advisory Committee. The project to update the city's wastewater treatment plant has a $470 million projected price tag. The idea for the committee follows repeated requests by industrial customers to slow down the process of setting wastewater fees. The the committee will consist of 15 members, including two Sioux City residents and five members selected from a pool of major industrial users. Mayor Bob Scott told us he believes industrial users deserve a seat at the table. I think that they're going to have their input just like the citizens are, just like the sister cities are, just like whoever the council member is. We're all going to have input into the process. I don't think it's going to be one group over the other and it doesn't matter at the end of the day we have to have a plant that the IDNR will accept and that the IDNR will approve the plans on that doesn't matter what else happens that's that's my main concern is we get a plan an application process will be used to select committee members the application will be available at City Hall and elsewhere in the metro members of South Sioux City's City Council mourn the loss of one of their members John Sanders Sr. passed away on May 4th at the age of 84 after a brief illness. At last night's meeting, council members had a wreath placed in front of Sanders' seat to honor the councilman and his family. We spoke with the mayor of South Sioux City about the impact that Sanders had on him personally, as well as the community as a whole. You talked to John, there wasn't an issue he didn't know about. And he was on top of it and he was just a kind person and really taught me personally a lot how to step back, take a look at things before you make any decisions. And so the time I knew him, I really took advantage of it, and it's, he's, he's going to be sorely missed. A memorial mass will be held at 1030 this morning at St. Michael's Catholic Church in South Sioux City. Over in Nebraska, an abortion-related amendment has been added to legislation that would restrict gender-affirming care for transgender youth under the age of 19. The amendment to LB 574 is known as the Preborn Child Protection Act. If passed, it would restrict abortions after 12 weeks of pregnancy, down from the current 20 weeks. A similar bill previously considered this session would have restricted abortions at six weeks. That measure failed to advance to a final reading two weeks ago. Lawmakers say the idea behind the move to combine the abortion and gender affirming care bills is that pairing the two issues into one bill may garner enough support to get both measures passed. And back in Iowa, the Iowa Hawkeyes athletic program has announced 26 student athletes are part of a sports wagering investigation, according to a press release from the university. The release states the investigation involves 26 current student athletes and one full-time employee of the university's Department of Athletics. The, the athletes are involved in the school's baseball, football, men's basketball, men's track and field, and men's wrestling programs. The university said in a statement they're aware of the investigation and they're fully cooperating. 
Back here in Sioux City, a woman involved in damaging the local Shields store with an explosive has received her prison sentence. 35-year-old Claudette Laura was sentenced to two years in prison for third-degree arson, 15 years for second-degree criminal mischief, and one year for fourth-degree theft. That's a total of 18 years. Officials say she and Jessica Katz went to the sporting goods store back in October of 2022. Laura was accused of setting off an explosive in the store while the two stole more than $500 in merchandise. Katz pleaded guilty to second degree criminal mischief as a habitual offender and fourth degree theft. Her sentencing date is for June 29th. And elsewhere, some U.S. lawmakers say it's time to crack down on companies that illegally employ and exploit migrant children. Some are blaming the Biden administration's border policy for the issue. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley is introducing legislation requiring companies to submit annual independent audits of their labor practices to the Department of Labor. The department is also calling on Congress to increase penalties for violations of child labor laws, which have risen 69% since 2018. And a criminal charge is much more effective than any fine. No one wants to go to jail. There are not enough resources for a labor inspector to go to a workplace even once in 30 years. The Labor Department would not comment on the proposal, but says the agency supports any increase in accountability or deterrence. Well, now it's time to meet today's stray of the day, or in this case, three of them. And every day we share a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption Rescue who's waiting to go home. Yeah, these are Monty, Minnie, and Maxwell, a family of three to four month old gray and white kittens. It's two boys and one girl. They were found on the 1900 block of Jones Street. The rescue says they're sweet little guys who love to find active families and someone to play with. Monty, Minnie, and Maxwell are available for adoption now. If you've lost your pet or if you're looking to adopt or interested in sponsoring a pet for adoption, all you need to do is visit the rescue's website. That's at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. They are the cutest little triplets. Maybe you can take all three. You could. And your, your first name doesn't need to start with the letter M to adopt them. You know, they could go to anyone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, my family's a family of all M's, actually. I was continuing on that trend with my cats, even. And now I, you can have three more. Okay, I'm going there today. I'm going to go after. We're going to have like seven M's in the house. That would be great. And like seven cats. But uh, at least they'll be staying warm today. Yeah, it'll be pretty easy to stay warm for most of us. You know, we're starting off in the 50s and we'll only get warmer. Not as warm as what we saw yesterday, though. Temperatures right now being reported in the mid to upper 50s with some 60s already. Vermilion at 60 degrees, 59 over by Wayne, and 56 here in Sioux City as it gets a little cooler to our east, but not too much. We've seen cloud coverage steadily making its way from western areas to the east as we see some showers developing in central parts of Nebraska and South Dakota, slowly pushing further east as well as we'll continue to keep an eye on that. It shows up a little bit here as we go through the stormcast, but through the early afternoon. Those showers are almost done and out of the forecast area, but keep an eye on a couple isolated cells that might have stronger storms embedded in them. As the stormcast shows that uh, we see cloud coverage and some showers making their way from the southwest through the area through tomorrow morning yet again as we'll see conditions that are going to be showing that it's going to be a little bit more active going forward now going afterwards we'll see that accumulation is still going to be on the lower end unless you're in pockets of that heavier rainfall out to our north but we're most of us still expecting at most closer towards a half inch as we look at tomorrow with temperatures rising up into the 70s today and those light sprinkles then 70s forecasted through the rest of this week and next week as well as we see drier conditions after these batches of showers. Another major stretch of 70s. All right, thanks, Victor. Well, now let's turn to sports where this morning the spotlight is on high school soccer with some chances to settle years long school rivalries. Anthony Mitchell has the details in your morning sports wrap. Good morning, Siouxland. The rain came and went last night, delaying our local high school soccer contest, but with the precipitation becoming a thing of the past, our area squads hit the pitch, starting off with state-ranked Bishop Heelan hosting Lamars. The Crusaders have won their last three when the Bulldogs are on a three-game skid. Heelan hopeful to make it four in a row. Check out the shot by Traylon White. Slipped out of the hands of the keeper into the back of the net for the first goal of the game. A quick cold there for the home team. 
Just a couple of minutes later, Lauren Peck with a nice shot, looking good, but Lexi Hurd elevates to deny the chance. The Bulldogs keeper had herself a busy night, but the Crusaders would get that one back. Peck with a through ball to White, who gives it to Jada Newberg right in front of the net for the one-timer. A nice setup. Home team goes up a pair of goals. Crusaders cruising now. Peck gets it past the keeper not once, but twice toward the end of the half. White, Peck, and Newberg all recorded hat tricks in the Crusaders' 10 0 win. On the boys' side, we start off with the Spencer Tigers as they made the trip to Orange City to take on MLC Floyd Valley. The home team looking for their first series win against the Tigers since 2018, while Spencer aims for its third straight shutout of the Dutchman. Ten-game win streak for Spencer. Dutchman looking to snap the streak here. Tigers showing their claws from the get-go. Cross inside to Camden Mosher. Taps it under the goal. 2-0 Spencer lead through the first 12 minutes. Tigers back on the prowl. Three minutes later, Caden Brewer giving it to Owen Olsen, the team's leading scorer, doing his thing. The senior punching it past the keeper for the score. 3-0 Tigers, one of four goals for the senior. But here come the Dutchmen flying into the backfield. Off the corner kick, Irving ramirez Iniguez with a chance. Eli Hookfin spears it, and that Tiger offense gave him insurance. Aiden Chafin beats the keeper out of the box for a wide open net. He is not missing that one. 4 nothing edge to the 25th minute as Spencer wins their 11th in a row. 7-0 the final. Over to Hayward in West Sioux and Storm Lake. Tornadoes, the winner of each meeting since 2014. Picking up in overtime of a 1-1 match, Francisco Magdaleno with an inside look. Two minutes in, Ernesto Flores swallows up the save. Storm Lake not giving up. Mauricio Zavala leon receiving it and tries to chip this time. A little short, easy gather for Flores. We're still tied here at one apiece. Then comes the dagger from Storm Lake. Huge cross inside of Luis Mendoza. He's got the game-winning header. Senior leaving his feet for that one. Storm Lake prevails in a thriller in overtime. 2-1, the final. And that'll be all for sports. Have a good day, Siouxland. Now let's take a look at this morning's top stories. It's what you need to know before you go. Nine months after Woodbury County officials increased setback distances for wind turbines, the issue is once again back on the agenda for County Board of Supervisors. The changes made last August increased the distance that wind turbines in the county must be set back from most public and private property from 1,250 feet to 2,500 feet. Now the Board of Supervisors is considering upping the distance that wind turbines must be set back from city limits from 600 feet to 2 miles. The changes under consideration would also increase how far away turbines would have to be from public conservation protected areas. This evening's weekly meeting of the Board of Supervisors will include a public hearing on the proposed changes. The hearing is scheduled to begin at 4.45 p.m. Elsewhere, President Biden will meet with four congressional leaders today to try and find common ground on the approaching debt ceiling deadline. The meeting is set to begin at 3 p.m. It will give the president, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, House Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell a chance to work towards avoiding a potential government default. However, expectations for a breakthrough are low. All right. Well, what are we feeling this morning? Definitely with some warmer temperatures. I already felt that early on. Yeah, we started off with some 50s, and we will get warmer back to above seasonal like we've had through the start of this week yesterday, just not into the 80s like we're present. We'll see that there is still some chances for showers appearing through the morning hours as we see bands of showers making their way from central Nebraska into western portions of the viewing area as we see that showers will continue to appear not only today but through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday of the rest of this week really. So we see showers through this week and then it starts to dry out really appearing there on Mother's Day. So hopefully we'll have good conditions to be outside if you got any outdoor plans for it. But we'll see temperatures in the 70s that remain in the 70s because even the coolest that we get still is low 70s at least. Yeah, like I said, stretch of 70s. And we're remaining clear for that Mother's Day. How great is that? Yeah, hopefully we get that. That'd be nice. Definitely. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.